In this episode, we're going to be talking about powering your projects, mainly from a prototyping perspective, but some of the concepts can be used for more permanent fixtures. However, I will be going into more detail on that in a future episode. Let's take a look at some power supplies that you probably have lying in a drawer somewhere in your house. We all have old USB chargers. This is one of mine from my BlackBerry days. I think that was about 10 years old, but this puts out about 0.5 of an amp, so it's not a lot of power, but it does put out five volts, and it's perfectly fine for your ESP and your Arduino projects, but I wouldn't use that for any of your Raspberry Pi projects. It just does not have enough current. This, however, is the official Raspberry Pi power adapter, and it puts out three amps, which is more than enough and does very well with your Raspberry Pi. Over here, this is a 12 volt power brick, and it puts out two amps at 12 volts. And I would not recommend plugging this directly into any of your projects. Well, within within reason, there's a couple projects which actually this <laughs> would work out perfectly fine. But I'll show you what we're gonna do with this in just a little while. Most of the time, you'll be just fine using these to power your Arduino or your ESP projects, but what about powering some other devices that maybe don't have regulators to actually bring that five volts down to whatever the level is that's required for your projects? This is when we move on to something a little bit more interesting. You may recognize this from previous episodes. This is a step-down converter or a buck converter. It's adjustable and allows you to take a voltage from five to 23 volts coming in and convert it down to zero to 16 volts. Because it's a buck converter, it needs a higher voltage here than you wanna output. So a perfect power source would be one of these, which would power up this over here, because this is 12 volts, which means we can put out five volts or 3.3 volts over there, or whatever else you need, as long as it's less than 12 volts. There are other devices that you can use to boost the signal. So that means you can boost the voltage coming in and make it higher on the output. Those are called boost converters or step up converters. And you can also get devices that are step up and step down converters. This one here, however, is just a buck converter and for your needs, it probably is gonna do the job just fine. Let's see how it works. So there we go, we have the step down converter putting out 5.03 volts, but let's confirm that with our multimeter. So we can take that, stick that onto voltage. And there we go. That's pretty close, not too bad for a device that costs 10 pounds. So we can put the voltage up and we can see that it increases on the multimeter as well. So as you can see, it's fairly accurate, not too bad at all. And also if you've seen in previous videos, the amp draw is pretty accurate as well when I've put this in line with the device that I'm powering. So let me just show you what happens if I try and go higher than the source voltage. It's not gonna let me go any higher than that because it just can't do that. This is a buck converter. It needs to have a higher source. So let's bring this down and get it down to 3.3 volts. There we go, 3.3 volts. Uh, it's a little bit off there, but there we go. Let's just bring it up to 3.32, which is close enough. It is perfectly good enough for our projects. And this can handle up to three amps output, so it's gonna be more than enough for the majority of your projects on your bench. Let's take a look at something else that you might actually wanna use in your end projects. In fact, I use it myself, and that is one of these. Essentially, that is pretty much the same as this. This here is also a buck converter, but obviously it doesn't have the display and all the rest of this. This here is the HW613, and 
you can get two of them for under a dollar. So they are really cheap and they're actually pretty good. So let's try and get this to output 3.3 volts and also five volts. So we can work with this a little easier. I'm going to put some header pins on there. To power this, we're gonna use the same source as before, the 12 volt power supply. So let's connect some wires onto this barrel jack again. This system has a common ground. So if we look underneath here, we can see where the pins go. There's VO plus the ground and then the in plus. So voltage out and then the in. So there's only one ground, which means we need to have a common ground. So I'm going to be putting a second wire in there. All we need to do here is wire it up, ground, voltage in, and we need another wire for voltage out, and that goes on the outside over here, and we are set up. So let's get our multimeter plugged in here, and let's plug in the power and see what we have. So the voltage is set to 11.64 at the moment. So let's adjust that. There's a potentiometer on the actual device here, and we're going to be adjusting that to allow you to change the voltage. There's another way to do it. On the back here, you can actually see constant voltage, but that's not really useful when you're talking about a bench power supply because you need to be able to adjust the voltage. But if you're gonna use this in a permanent project, you can just use these voltages on the back and just bridge the connections and you're gonna get your constant voltage. To adjust the voltage, you just need to go to this little screw down there and adjust it. And you can see there I'm dropping the voltage down, right down, it's quite sensitive, but once you get it where you need it, it stays there. So if we wanted 3.3 volts, just leave that there. And that's close enough and that'll sit there and give you a constant 3.3 3.31 volts but 3.3 volts and that is perfectly fine to power your projects what you could do then if you are going to use this in a permanent project you can well you've got two ways to do this <laughs> if it is set by the potentiometer you can go and put a little bit of glue on top of that so it doesn't move or just use the bottom and actually just bridge the gap underneath there and it will actually give you 3.3 volts constant anyway so let's put it up to 5 volts and we can see what that does. The good thing about this device as well is it puts out 3 amps, same as the, the bigger one that I showed you earlier. It's quite a powerful little thing. And it is very efficient, over 90% efficiency. I believe the specifications say 97%, but it's pretty efficient, which means you don't waste energy in the conversion. Typically with other types of step down or linear regulators it releases a lot of heat which is just a waste of energy and also you have to figure out something to do with all the heat so that's why I like these buck converters more well you can see it's a little bit more fiddly than the other device I showed you but it does the job and it's very 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 cheap and the same as the other one if I go all the way up it's not gonna allow me to go anywhere beyond 11.95, even though it can take an input of 24 volts, up to 24 volts, same as the other device that we used, but I'm only putting in 12 volts, which means it's only able to step down to 11.96. So it's not gonna take me any higher than that. What I may recommend is, if you don't wanna buy one of those adjustable ones that I showed you earlier, then you could buy a few of these and just get them set to the voltage you need them at, Make sure you mark them correctly and then you can use them for your projects or for your bench and you'll have no problems. Of course you can get proper bench power supplies and this is just a, a small one that I use. It does the job. It allows me to use up to five amps, it's 32 volts and it is mains powered. So you can see at the back here, it allows you to use 230 volt, which we use here in the UK, but you can switch it over to 110 as well if you're in the US. So let me just switch it on and you can see 
what this actually looks like. So over here, it's off at the moment, switch it on, and there we go. This is a small bench power supply. It is good value for money. For the projects that I do, it does the job just fine. You can get much bigger, much more expensive ones, but this here is just absolutely perfect for what I need. And in terms of quality versus cost, you can't get much better than this. So I've got the set of five volts. You'll notice that you can see the amps here, but you can also set the amps. So you can actually rate limit the amps. If I want to move this across, if I want to restrict this to, let's say 900 milliamp, then I can do that. Or if I want, I can let it go all the way to 5.1 amps and it'll draw what it needs. The reason you might want to do this is with some sense of electronics, if you create a short, you might have some big problems and you might want to limit the amps. With this one, you can do that. And you can't do that on the buck converters I've shown you previously. The voltage as well, we can change that. And all that you need to do to change it is just press that button. You can see that it changes the positioning of where you're setting. It just allows you to set it either in very fine increments like that, 0 0.01 of a volt, or you can just go across and do the volts themselves all the way up to 32.3. So very handy. We'll bring that back down to five volts. It's a great little device, great value for money. And if you are getting serious about doing your electronics projects, then this is a very handy thing to use. Before I finish off this video, I want to talk about one last type of power converter. These here are AC to DC power converters. They take AC mains voltage on the one side and output a DC voltage on the other side. These two here are the same type, although this one puts out five volts, this one puts out 3.3 volts, but this here is just an insulated version of this. This is inside here most likely, and it just means that you don't have bare pins. So if you are gonna use one of these, then this is probably what I'd recommend. This here is one I'm gonna be using in a few of my projects. I have about six or seven of these. So this puts out five volts and a considerable amount of ampage compared to these two. These don't put out a lot of amps. I'm not gonna to talk too much about AC or mains voltage when it comes to this beginner's guide to automation. And that's because it can be very dangerous and I don't want beginners to be playing around with that. If you already know your way around AC, then feel free to go ahead and do that but you need to be very cautious because it can kill you. DC, it can also kill you, just uh, it's less likely to, especially the low voltages we're working on, five volts or even the 12 volts. But when you're working with 110 volts or 220 AC, then you can cause yourself some real damage. Anyway, I hope that you learned a lot in this episode and I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below how you're getting on with the series and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Until then, stay spicy. I hope that you're enjoying this series and that you're getting some value out of it. And if you are, please consider supporting me on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash chili chomp. And if you sign up there to support me, then you get access to my private Discord server where there are multiple channels that you can come have discussions around anything I talk about in my videos, things like growing and source making, and of course, electronics projects and automation. So it's a good place to come and ask questions if you have any questions around automation that you're doing for yourself or anything that I've talked about in my videos. And I really hope to see you there.